Hello, and welcome back to the Simplifiers podcast, where we take topics in work and in life and simplify them. And friends, some of you guys out there are part of this crazy little thing called the job market. You're in transition. You're looking for your next role out there. And let's be real. This year has been a crazy year for those looking for a job. So how do you stand out as a top job applicant. I felt like that was a worthy topic to simplify. And I'm so thrilled about the guests that I found today to help us simplify that. Her name is Kim Diamond Belogue, and she is a trusted business partner specializing in helping organizational leaders and hiring managers navigate today's ever-changing landscape of talent acquisition. She's been in talent acquisition for well over 17 years now in recruiting, working for Fortune 500 companies, startups, and private equity ventures. She's also the head of K Diamond Consulting, which aims to guide organizations of all sizes through the complexities of talent acquisition with a fresh approach. So I'd like to welcome to the Simplifiers podcast, Kim Diamond. Hey, Kim. Hello. Thanks, Mary. I appreciate that. I'm thrilled to be here today. It's very exciting I'm to have a so conversation with you. I'm so glad you're here too, because you know what? Here's the thing. We need insider information. And you as a recruiter with as many years of experience as you've had, you've seen the dips and the curves, I'm sure. You've seen mm-hmm. the patterns of a tight job market and a loose job market and whatever this job market is right market. now, right? True. So True. I start there. You know, as a recruiter, somebody who knows this this whole industry and how this works, what do you think is actually going on in the current job market from your point of view? Why does it seem so different this year? Well, I think that, unfortunately, I think that the pandemic uh, made, you know, a significant uh, reason for the shift. Mm. People, you know, had to work from home. Uh, their jobs changed. There's just the complexion in general. Organizations mm-hmm. change their philosophies and so on and so forth. And then they're trying to bring people back to the same environment we had before. So we're struggling with some of those changes because people made adjustments life-wise and so on. So I think that was the start of it. Obviously, the you know economy and things of that nature also are affecting because we were affected uh, during the COVID. You know, the economy was infected, affected in many areas, right? Yeah. So that changed what some businesses boomed and and now they're retracting a little some businesses closed and had to re, or rebrand and so on so those are we we all know about those mm-hmm. um another change is technology you know technology is always and ever changing evolving and we've you know more and more resources are coming available for people to apply <laughs> people to screen and source candidates so I think that's changed a lot of how we do things. Some of it's for the better. I think some of it's maybe, you know, ha- has its own cons, so to speak, yeah. right? There's pros and cons to it. But I think that that people are trying to navigate that. Some people who are used to a, a prior approach, um, dealing with the the latest and greatest approaches to applying and, and how to navigate that, I think, has become um, just, it's different, you know, and some oh. people adapt to change and some people, you know, are slower to adapt to change. So, you know, it's so interesting that you should say that because this is what other people have been saying to us here on the podcast Um, earlier this year. It reminds me of my conversation with Shannon Taylor. He's the head of uh, talent acquisition for JCPenney and Shreya Mehta. She was um, a recruiter for Meta and um, Amazon and a lot of other big heavy hitters. And what they were saying is that in 2021 and early 22, it was like trying to get butts in seats, like hiring bonuses, you got to, um, you know, you breathe, you speak English, let's go, you know, like just got to get you in roles and fill those roles as quickly as possible. And so I think that there were a lot of companies that did go through a boom, but also a necessity of the ability to work remotely and work from home. And then 2023, they were like, yikes, we can't hit our revenue profit margins with this big of a talent pool, you know, working in our workforce, we got to lean it down. And so you saw the Mm -hmm. massive tech layoffs um, in 23 and, you know, 2024, I think companies are still kind of shaking it up. They're still trying to figure out how to lean it down. 
And I also have heard, at least in the U.S., um, you know, a lot of companies are just sort of waiting to see how this presidential election is going to shake out. And even still, after, you know, say February of 25, things might stabilize then, but we're really looking at like core essential jobs for most companies. Is that what you Mm -hmm. see as well? Yes. And I think so you have more individuals competing for less jobs, irregardless of what some of the media might share with you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so let's talk about the technology side really, really quick, because obviously everybody knows that I geek out about AI, Mm -hmm. especially as of late. But I really do have to empathize for the recruiters that are out there because there have been a lot of layoffs in the talent acquisition field as well. Mm -hmm. So these recruiters are working with fewer people on the team and, and the work load is the same, if not more, because, well, let's face it, AI can help you optimize your resume and and create more applications, more than if you were to do it manually yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, yes, and that's exactly what's happening. You've you've probably seen that. There's a lot of recruiters out there looking for new opportunities because they've had to scale back because that's just part of what they're trying to balance at this point. And then mm-hmm. using technology is great, and and I, I think it's it it helps simplify uh, some of the processes that you do uh, throughout the day. But I think we're more challenged with finding really good talent that way. Like I mentioned, uh, is that we are using it to we're we're using it to because we are we're, we're inundated, right? We we have less yeah. people to look, right? So now we're really funneling it down to that like three top purple squirrels that we can get in this group based on them che- checking every single box. And I think we're missing really good quality talent by having those structures and then relying so heavily on those resources directly. Now I know, you know, myself, I like to use it as a resource to help me get through to a, you know, a larger pool, not just three or four. Mm. And I'm not saying everybody does that, but I think that they're really using it. They're just microing it down and down and down. And uh, you really want to be able to explore a lot of the talent that comes through those pipelines because sometimes it's, or, or funnels, because sometimes it may not be that job they're great for, but there might be another opportunity, but you never have had the chance to review or speak to them. Okay. So, you know, simplifying is great and and we need it because we're, like you said, leaner now, Right. Right. Um, but I think that there is some challenges it's creating as well for people well, who are, you know, looking. It so. blows my mind when I see jobs that are posted, say, on LinkedIn. And within 24 hours of posting, you've got well over 600 applicants. Like, I don't know how any recruiter can can look through and scan through 600 applications to even yeah. discern yeah. a top 20 list. And so what I've heard, and tell me if this is true or not, is that recruiters skim off the first, say, 50 or 100 applications that they get. And they go, okay, well, I've got my list of 20 or my three purple squirrels, as you say. That's enough. Even though your ultimate superstar candidate was number 425, right? Uh, they never got saw. Like, it never was seen, right? Mm-hmm. That can happen. It's it's impossible for someone to look at every single one. Mm-hmm. But the positive to it is based on the system and that you're coming into as an applicant, the organization does have your information. So another opportunity or an opportunity of similarity or that, you know, you may have some skill sets you're in. Okay. So, but you do have to take that into context. So when you're looking at how many applicants have come in, I don't like to discourage anyone from applying because your information is now within the system. Yeah. If they are using that system going forward to, to find additional talent. So don't like to discourage people, but I guess as a recruiter, it's impossible. I mean, you mm-hmm. do, you get through so many and and then you can't have hiring managers. No one would ever make a decision. You would just go on and on and on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, you do have to do have to work with it that way. Um, you know, and then sometimes the problems that we have as recruiters is people apply because they feel confident that maybe they have some of the skill sets or they're interested in the opportunity. Mm-hmm. So we do need to use um, our personal sourcing and screening capabilities as well as technology so that we don't waste time with people who would not be able to do this position and get to the people that are within that, that pipeline of candidates that could and would right. do the position. Right, because it's, 
it's like creating a roadblock in, in order for the recruiters to actually find the top talented, qualified candidates. And, you know, I'm going to put it in really oversimplified terms, but it, it's like being a cashier for a couple of years and, and then seeing a job that is like VP of retail operations and going, I'm perfect. I'm totally qualified for this. Let's let's just apply for it because that'll be fun, right? Um, and, and, you know, I, I think that there is a piece of that to go, okay, I really, A, need to discern am I at least 80% qualified for this role, right? Right. And Mm -hmm. if so, then I definitely need to tailor my application and put my best foot forward and get it in fast, right? Within that first 24 to 48 hours of the job being posted. Is that what you recommend? Yes, that is what what I recommend. That was one of the things I was going to, you know, bring to to the front with you is that people should really look at the qualifications because, Mm. you know, honestly, we have... We have um, algorithms, we have knockout questions. So if, yeah, if you're not, you know, let's put it this way. If they really want a bachelor's degree and you don't have one, I'm not saying you, you know, some people say, well, I still have X experience. Okay. But just understand if you apply you and you don't get a response, then more than likely that's why. Right. Because okay? it's a criteria of the Because it's a criteria. Right. Yeah. And they have a funnel. There, there's a, with, with the system will immediately flag it as not. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, one that you want to pursue. So just be mindful of that when you are applying and, and it would be helpful for all those that, (laughs) that do meet most of the qualifications to, to not have to sift through all of them. But again, technology does help with that. And we do have, do have that, but again, uh, apply as soon as you can, if you see the opportunity. Yes. Okay. And now I really want to squash this myth right out the gate. It is not a robot that is rejecting your application because there's a lot of talks of like ATS is just a robot that's just knocking me out entirely. There still has to be a human on the back end that goes, no, this is not a candidate for this job, right? That has to manually push the button, correct? Um, well, we have systems that you can create knockout questions. And usually those questions are asked in an application process. They'll say, they'll pull them specifically to the forefront. Like, do you have a bachelor's degree? So we'll use that one as Mm -hmm. probably the easiest one. And if you tick no, then my system will tell me you don't have that qualification. So that's done systematically. Okay. Okay. So, um, and there can be algorithms that are, that I don't necessarily, you know, we all learn through, through the tech people. (laughs) how to work through those and whatever you implement in your system and however you decide that you're going to funnel through. We look for some specifics to try to get our eyes on them, but you do. there is some technology that does move you to a different bucket per se, mm, and they all like can a, work. A more qualified bu- a candidate bucket, basically. Perfect. But but there still has to be a person that goes, okay, even so the so this knockout question, she said no, and I need yes. All right, we have to click reject. And that's what automates the, the rejection email, right? Right. Okay. Right. So let's go back to the the core of what we want to simplify. So job seekers out there are listening intently. I, I can see them right now in my mind. They've got their paper and their pen. They're ready. They're like, Kim, tell me the secrets because this is driving me crazy, right? What are those key ingredients in your opinion as a recruiter to standing out online and specifically in your job applications? Like what should you optimize first and how? Let's dive deep. Mm, okay. Well, the the behemoth in the room is LinkedIn. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we all go to LinkedIn. Uh, so, you know, I s- highly suggest you, you you get your LinkedIn profile in a good position. So that means a picture. And the picture should be, in my opinion, should be professional or at very least presentable. This isn't, in my opinion, it's not Facebook. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you're, if you're, if you're a creative person and you're you know, or you're a comedian, then maybe you use a little bit of flair. But if you're looking for something that's corporately a corporate environment or something, you probably want to keep it pretty straightforward, nice smile, you know, show some personality doesn't have to be, you know, that professional suit and tie picture. Um, But you start there because when you don't have a picture or you don't have any information, then there's kind of two things that register is, well, I don't know enough about them. Number one, can't really tell. And number two, they really must not be interested either to be recognized, right? So it's kind of a twofold thing. And that's 
I mean, obviously I'm giving you my opinion, but but I think that if you can get your picture up there, you get your appropriate title. There's there's lots of options to look at. You can go and look at people's profiles, but you want to make sure you have a title up there that's that's reflective of what you do. It's not necessarily what you do for an organization, but you as a person. Yeah. Okay. That's your branding. You want people to know if you're a, you know, I'm the, a top sales professional, or you know, I am, you know, a, you know, a VP of pricing, and or I'm a. You don't have to use titles. Just say, a, you know, like for me, it's you know, talent strategic talent acquisition, and that's not a title. That's what I do. So you want people to grab a hold of that when they're looking for and and it to stand out. You also want to make sure that you complete the profile. You want it to to have information such as a little bit about yourself. There is an opportunity to put words in there for people to get a flair for you. You know, not a summary of your organization you're working for you. You know, yeah. what you've done and, you know, just put it together like you would put at the top of a resume, but a little bit longer, a little bit more in depth, not just an objective summary. Okay. And then you want to make sure that it matches. So I LinkedIn is to me. If you can, you want your jobs to match, you want information under each job. So you want to know a bit about the responsibilities. This does not have to be a cut and paste from a resume, but you want to highlight your responsibilities and your accomplishments. Mm -hmm. Those are things that we we like to see. We like to see um, any types of groups or organizations that you're attached to, of course, your education information. And, um, you know, to me, that's a go-to for me. Now, it's not for everybody because there are certain people that, you know, there's certain roles in the world that that don't necessarily, we don't necessarily go there, but we would go there if people were there. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Let's be clear. You know, just because we don't necessarily find a lot of people who are currently working in a warehouse environment because they're in a warehouse all day. They're not on LinkedIn. They're not on yeah. a computer. Okay. That doesn't mean we would find them there if we knew they were there. Okay. Let's just, let's just be honest. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the other thing is on Indeed. Um, I want to cover Indeed. Indeed is a is the other behemoth, okay, that everybody goes to for people and for job postings. If you have a resume on Indeed, my biggest, bestest recommendation is if you are looking for a job, you need to update that resume. Indeed does not do anything for you but house the resume that yeah. people can search. So if your resume last showed you at a job in 2020, well, we're confused. Have you worked since 2020? What have you been doing since 2020? So, and I think people forget. They just go, well, my resume is on deed. It doesn't update as you update. You mm. have to physically update it. So for those that use Indeed for their job searching and and, and getting recognized and, and using applications, get that updated because I struggle with that all the time. I'm looking at it going... I'm not sure. Are they they working? Mm, You know, I mean, you know, there's lots of things that go through your mind. So those are two, LinkedIn and Indeed, the two go-tos in the the world right now when it comes to looking for candidates, those areas need to be updated. I love that. And I'm so glad that you touched on Indeed as well, because I think people sort of think of it as just a place to find jobs and then they bounce off. Because, you know, if you're a job seeker, you probably spend a significant amount of your time sitting on LinkedIn, going through the scrolling of the feed and making connections and all that. But Indeed is quite a powerful platform that, you know, Mm -hmm. helps people find you and you find them as well, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So let's break down some of the things that you said, because I think this is so incredibly important. So I love how you you did this because it, it sort of takes you from the very top of your LinkedIn page and kind of scrolling down from there. So I'm going to say some Captain Obvious things to you, everybody that's out there. And you all know these things, but I still see them on LinkedIn. And I'm like, what? Why? I don't get it. So your photo... I like to look at your photo. First off, it should never have any pets or children in it. It should just be you. It should just be you. <laughs> let's just, no let's fish. just put that out there. <laughs> no fish. Oh my gosh. Uh, this is not a dating profile. Uh, <laughs> yes. And your photo should be, say, three words that you want to come across and express as you. Because if you're just looking at me with a snap judgment, the three words that come to mind when I, what I hope with my profile picture, and you guys can click through the show notes to find me on LinkedIn, thesimplifiers.com. You tell me. But my three words are warm, approachable, and confident. 
Because mm-hmm. I like to believe that that's the kind of person that somebody would want to hire and have on their team and work alongside. Somebody who's warm, approachable, and professional. Your three words could be whatever. Um, you know, a comedian's three words are going to be very different from a, an accountant's three right. words. But like, right. it, it just ask yourself, is this photo really representing me and mm-hmm. my my expertise and my personality best, right? Yep. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And we'll see different things. Like you said, it's, it's become, it's for some reason or another, it started to become a little bit more like the Facebook, which I still mm-hmm. also think Facebook, when you are on a job search, you know, if you're, if you have a public profile that people can see, you need to make it presentable. Yes. Okay, so. Gosh, that is so important. And that that's a whole other thing. But this is a homework yeah. assignment for anyone that's listening. Is your yeah. Facebook, your personal Facebook unlock and whatever public content is there is things that, again, those three words that if they see your Facebook personal life representation, does it mirror or complement your LinkedIn professional online profile as well? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. you know, again, going down the the LinkedIn page, that headline at the very, very top, um, I love the advice that you give, like, um, what are the keywords that help you understand what it is I do and what expertise I bring to the table? I've seen some people do like action statements, like I've saved a company X number of dollars in the last 12 months, or I help solve blah, blah, blah. Um, what are your thoughts on an action statement versus sort of like, Mine says senior leadership development strategist or, you know, AI for HR trainer or something like that. What what are your thoughts? Yeah, I I, I don't think you want to do a bragging statement yeah. there. Um, yeah. I honestly think that, you know, it, everybody's different. Some people might look at that as a very confident individual. Uh, other people may look at it as an arrogant person. Mm, so, a fine you know, line. if you want to play on the safe side to me, you stay away from it just, just because you don't know who's going to, how a person, who that person is and how they're going to receive that comment. That's really interesting. And also, you know, can you really back it up with facts? Like, uh, how much X number of dollars you've saved a company, you, you individually saved the company yeah. that many dollars. Yeah, I know it's, <laughs> well, it's, you know, if you want to talk about that down in your accomplishments <laughs> under something, yeah. then that's fine. If you want to include that as is information there because we do scan to see if people put different things. You know, it's it's kind mm. of a we look at it as a kind of a quick resume. We haven't gotten the whole resume yet, but we want to glean as much as we can from that information so that we can then proceed with the connection and the resume. Yeah. And a really well optimized LinkedIn profile. You, you would be smart to realize that there are keywords in there that are searchable for the back end of LinkedIn LinkedIn for recruiters is completely different. It's a completely different view than what, you know, us normal folks see, right? And so the searchable terms, so like, you know, putting your aspirational future job title in your headline, you know, that may match to the jobs that you're applying for now makes a lot of sense. And and plugging in, you know, those keywords in your summary section and, and in your job experience section as well, right? Yes, yes. Like you, and just, I, you want it to be robust, but it doesn't yeah. have to be too long. I mean, it yeah. just depends. But you know, we as recruiters, if you've been doing this for a long time, you you know where to go, right? Sometimes we'll go, oh, I don't want to read a whole book. Well, if you've been doing this for a long time, we don't read the whole book. Okay. We, no. we we're we're cliff notes. We're all day. Okay. That's yeah. what we do. Bullet points are your friends, right? Because yeah, I, I have right. a firm belief no one reads anymore. So they have to be scannable and quick. Um, and I had gotten advice along the way, you know, from a, a resume writer that said, you know, in your job experience section in LinkedIn, you know, like I worked here for so-and-so date to actually just write it as a summary so that mm-hmm. when you go to tailor your your resume for every single job application, the bullet points are going to be kind of different for each job application, but the summary should, you know, encapsulate basically the core responsibilities and accomplishments. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yep. Great. Yep. Okay, good. Um, I, I feel like that was a good enough uh, overview for LinkedIn. So I'm going to move on. Um, but I was referred to you because I was told that you're a genius about something called a video resume. Now talk to us about what those are and how people can create them and where we should post them. What is it? Well, that's it's just something I came up with recently and people have done this, okay? I'm not the first to create this <laughs> yeah. by any stretch, 
okay, let's just be honest. Here we are. Okay. <laughs> so it, it's just, I have had several people that I have known, prof- you know, worked with and, and know professionally that have been looking for new opportunities, you know, changing careers and so on. And, you know, they're, they're coming to me and I know how, I know how strong they are as a candidate. And they're, they're sharing with me their challenges of I'm getting any responses. I've applied to, you know, 35 jobs and, and it was just kind of baffling me. It was like, how are you not getting through the screening process, right? So I get it. You know, like I said, like we just talked about, you know, recruiting teams have scaled down. Um, we're we're relying more on technology and making sure that, you know, they're ticking every box, okay? Mm-hmm. But ultimately, you know, you can't really know who the person is. And, and maybe this person who ticked every box is not going to be a cultural match, okay? They can't, that's not going to come through all of this. There's no yeah. way you're going to know this person can tick every box and you can talk to them and they're an absolute jerk. Like you're not gonna be able to work with them. It's just, yeah. bottom line. well, you don't know that through the other, but then you might miss somebody who, you know, is right. Or take longer. It's just this, like, so as I'm thinking through that, I, th- I thought to these individuals, would you be open to doing a, 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 basically an interview with me, but in more of a conversational style, there are video interviews. A lot of people request people to do them, but they're talking to a screen. They're answering questions. This isn't a direct communication like you and I are having. So I wanted to be a comfortable environment for them to be able to express themselves and people to be able to see how they communicate, hear about them, and, you know, kind of get a feel for them versus just reading it on paper. So to me, and I, you know, it's it's just, and I put it on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is a great place and it's a great resource for that. You can do it on Instagram um, if, if, you know, you want to talk to whoever you're working with. I recommend you get with a recruiter, somebody who can have that conversation with you versus you talking to a screen. Yeah. And and then have them put it, you know, if you're open to it, have them put it put it out there to their networks so that people can see you. And maybe it, they'll and you, you know, you apply to the position, you know, they they'll reach out to you. That's my goal, is that they would reach out to you and say, I'd like to talk with you. I know you're looking for an opportunity. And uh, so that's that's I just think it needs more of a personal touch right now because I feel these people are getting lost and yeah. I'm, I'm stunned at how they are getting lost because if they were in my pipeline, I'd be calling them. So. Yeah. Well, and I love this as a concept because, you know, a lot of times people will ask me and they go, Mary, you're so good at the LinkedIn thing. You're always posting such compelling content. And I love seeing what you, you put out there every single day. Like, how do I do this? I don't have any clue. And this is a perfect first step. And, and for the perfectionists that are out there listening to us right now, and you're like, oh my God, it will never look great. And I won't look great. I'm going to need a hair and makeup artist. Like, no, 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 no. You, you just hit, get on a Zoom call, record the conversation, mm-hmm. maybe have three or four questions. Um, and, and what kind of questions would you recommend they ask and they answer? Well, I, my approach is I talk to the individual that's interested in doing it and I ask them, what do you want people to know about, about yes. you, your skills? Okay. It's, we usually don't go down the, the personal side of things, right? We just were talking about their skill sets. So I let them sit and think about it and say, come, and then I would formulate how I would ask them the questions so that this information could come out and people could hear. Yeah. So. Cause I think I could see a question, a uh, flow that's like, tell me, um, you know, encapsulate who you are in a professional sense. What gets you excited? What kind of projects do you love to work on that light you up? What are your greatest strengths that you bring to the table, right? Those are simple. And this is not a 30 minute long conversation. This could be as simple as five, 10, maybe 15 minutes, right? Yeah. 15 minutes is probably where we, we, you should, you know, try to that way you have a couple of topics to cover, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that person has an opportunity to share. And, you know, what we what I call this is that they're doing their storytelling. This, this is important when it comes to uh, when you interview. It's part of yeah. the interview process, right? And this is a format for them to do kind of storytelling, but they're not under any kind of pressure <laughs> for a job. Exactly. Yes. And it should feel natural. And let's be real. The first time you ride a bicycle, it's really hard and you fall down, Right. So you're probably going to have to do a few takes, maybe try it a few times and then, you know, get better and better at it over time. But I just love the idea of a video conversation that talks about your candidates like greatest skills, and then you pin it at the top of your LinkedIn. So when people, recruiters are scanning because they don't have time, 
And they go, oh, this looks different. What is this? Click on it. Oh man, I get to hear her in the flesh and and get a good sense of her personality, her expertise. Yes, I'm going to flag her as a as a top candidate. I mean, jackpot. So smart. And honestly, I'm probably going to give this away now. LinkedIn should have that on their people. They should have that capability on the profile. Totally. A hundred percent. Right. Ugh, it's so smart, Kim. I love that you <laughs> share this because I just think that, you know, and and don't overthink it. Like find a friend. Uh, it no, doesn't don't have overthink to be, it. It doesn't have to be a recruiter. It, it could be a career coach. It could be a, a person yes, that you exactly. know is a good communicator. Give them a few right. questions to seed to you, record on Zoom, get her done. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It doesn't have to be a recruiter, just somebody, like you said, who can talk, have that conversation with them, make it conversational. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, it seems like, you really need to go above and beyond these days to get noticed. And, uh, you know, I think that my, my personal belief is that LinkedIn is great. Technology is great, but really it's all about networking, isn't it? Like getting face to face and building those relationships with people that, you know, um, who will talk about you behind closed doors in a positive way. Right. Mm -hmm. So what are some tips for networking? That's going to help differentiate yourself and, and also just to help you stand out. Well, obviously you want to go to your communities. Okay. You know, obviously your, your immediate networks, what those might look like, you know, whether you're, you know, in some hobbies, whether you play pickleball, golf, you know, you go to your church or what have you, you know, those are places you want to start first to let people know that you're, you know, you're looking for a new opportunity and share with them, you know, if they, well, what do you do? You know, a lot of times people, people know people, but they don't really know what they do. Right. (laughs) So, Mm -hmm. you know, give them a little overview. Have something that you know you can share with everybody that's real quick and easy that they would remember. Um, And then, of course, you want to go to the technology platforms. You know, uh, again, we circle back to LinkedIn. LinkedIn's a great place um, when you're on there to make connections, check in with your people, you know, start, start connecting, start looking at groups that you would like to affiliate with. And there's tons of them. You just search groups and based on what you would be interested in, they could be hobby type groups, it, whatever you would like to get information from yourself that you could also include your information and potentially network through that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then what else? On, I mean, LinkedIn, LinkedIn has a tutorial to tell you, you know, these are some steps you should take. You probably know better than I do that, um, that you can take to do the networking, right? The groups and then connecting and then asking people to help you connect and being yeah. on LinkedIn and, and and liking posts that you that you do like, you know, you don't click something just because, okay. <laughs> but, you know, if you like someone's posting um, or or post, you know, do some research. If you have a particular thing you're passionate about that makes sense, that's professional, you want to write an article about or, or you want to share an article, do those types of things to get yourself continuously going through the loop so people see you. It's, it's about being seen, you know, um, you know, out of sight, out of mind, right, type of thing. So yeah. the more you do that, I think, and I think that that's a super easy thing. You come in once, once a day, you sit down at your computer, you go through it and, you know, you've, you've put something out there and you've done a couple of things every day. Yeah. So. I love that. And, and you're talking about like a content strategy. I mean, I came from a communications background in my early career, so I can link that to this now, but you know, the way I look at it with LinkedIn in particular, especially if you're trying to find a job right now, post one time a day. That's it. Just one post Monday one through Friday. It's we're not talking multiple posts, not, you know, fancy film shoots, nothing. We're just one post a day, Monday through Friday. And then I like to think about like, what are the three primary things I want people to associate with me as my thought leadership? And so for me, it's like leadership development, um, AI for HR, and employee engagement. Those are the three. And so I should be talking about that the majority of the time in those Monday through Friday posts, whether it's an insightful article I read and, you know, kind of sparking a conversation with people, or maybe I share like a, a cheat sheet that somebody else has created. I didn't create it, but I'm just passing it along. So people know, they go, oh, wow, Mary is a person who knows a lot about this, this, and this, you know, what are those three things that you want to be known for? And, you know, weave that into your content creation, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Right. You should weave that in. You know, if, if, if it's something in your brain is just like, oh, I can't think of anything, yeah. you know, find a quote, put a nice quote up. You know, it's, it's sometimes, you know, you're, you're, you're like, I don't have any content today and, you know, just, but, you know, put a quote up that somebody else 
created the quote, but you know, you're able to share it because it's something that resonates with you and you feel people would be inspired by. Yes. And again, it's all for the eyeballs of Kim's around the world. All, yeah. I, all, all, everything I write is really meant for the recruiters out there to go, wow, Mary is a thought leader in this, this, and this. I need to call her. I need to book a screening call. So like, know your audience mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and, and build your, your um, content accordingly. And you know what's so silly, Kim? And again, I look at it as a game because I think if you try to, you know, put like anything else on it, it gets really, really hard or really, really heavy. So just play it like a game. Do you know mm-hmm. what's funny is that the most engaged posts sometimes are photos of myself. <laughs> Like it's a photo of myself or me with my kids or something like that. Um, professional, obviously. And then spark into a story or a conversation and I ask a question. But the photos of bright, shiny, smiling faces get the most engagement. Isn't that funny? Well, it's the same thing with the videos. I, I'm doing this mm-hmm. one with you. I, I work with a, another individual, Christy Howard. She and I do career catalysts once a month and that as well. And because people can see you, you know, it's, yes. it's not just words, right? Yeah. That they're reading. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. People like human connection. Um, exactly. And that's, this is at the bottom line of it. But I think also back to networking, I think you have to get offline and you have to get face-to-face. You have to meet people you do. like at your local industry networking events or educational yep. events. Like that is so sure. huge as well. You're building a network of people who are going to talk about you, recommend jobs to you, mm-hmm. um, and, and introduce you to key decision makers at your target jobs, right? That's right. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, you do start with your personal networking where, and, and now that we can do that again, and I think people got away from that because they, we couldn't do it, right? We couldn't get face to face. And now that you can, those groups are alive and well again. So take advantage of them. Yeah. And, you know, what are your thoughts on like asking people for a 15 or a 30 minute virtual coffee, you know, they're brand new contacts, not necessarily a recruiter and not necessarily asking them for a job, but you're just trying to build your network. What do you think about virtual coffees, like video calls? I think those would be great. I think that's a great opportunity and you probably want to engage people that you might want to learn something from. Yeah. Like right. ask them, like, what's the culture like at your company? Yeah, whether it's about it, about an organization or about what they do. People like to mm-hmm. talk about themselves. You know, that's just the nature of it, you know. So if you, you know, find somebody that interests you, like, hey, you know, I saw you were doing this on, uh, you know, you've been posting these. And I'd like to learn a little bit more. Something yeah. like, yeah. And then that's a good, and then, you know, you do learn more. <laughs> so yeah. it's two for one, you know, you can make a connection and you learn. So yeah, and I think those those kind of cold asks are hard if you've not had any engagement with that person beforehand. But you know, like if you're building, um, like liking their posts, commenting on them, sparking conversations, that's drumming up that action. They go, hang on, who's this Kim gal? Like I keep seeing her name over and over again. And then a couple of weeks later, you go, hey, so and so, um, I'd love to carve out fifteen or thirty minutes and talk about blah 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 the culture at yada yada. And it's a lot easier. It's a warm introduction rather than who's this Kim girl? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah agree. Is, is there anything else that you feel like is incredibly important to stand out as a top candidate that, that we haven't talked about so far? You know, just if you, if when you, when, if you want to step forward, okay, not, not just the looking for it, but if you're in the process, if you want to stand out as a top candidate and you're engaged in an, an organization. I really, the best thing I could recommend is if you are interested in an opportunity, do your research. Okay. Mm-hmm. Learn about the company, learn about the people. They, you can find those people on LinkedIn most of the time as well. Um, you can find out information on Google about the company. Get, you know, really learn about those things when you're preparing for if you get the call. Okay. Mm-hmm. I know we're 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 kind of talking prior. Now I'm talking about if you get to that point. Uh, we really like to know, I can tell you, it's it's one of those questions that we always ask. So do you know anything about our organization? And when people say, well, no, not really. I just applied to the position. It doesn't stop us necessarily, but it certainly is not going to, um, you know, we're not going to feel, you know, excited to continue engagement, but we will because some people, um, we know, get busy and they don't have a chance to. But I highly recommend that you do that if you're interested in an organization. Get those information up front. So when you do get asked that question by the recruiter, you can say, yeah, I saw this, saw that, blah, blah, blah. Then, you know, that really helps propel the conversation. 
Okay. Mm, yes. Uh, so, you know, to do that research too, because we've done it on you to the best of our ability. So you should in return be doing it. Such great advice. And for those that are out there that are using chat GPT, even the free version, can I give you a hot tip? You can go and search for a company's annual report. Most times it's public. You know, you can find it. It's a PDF, right? You download the annual report PDF. You go on to chat GPT and the prompt you write is this, get your pens ready. Digest this annual report from XYZ company and give me five questions to ask the recruiter that shows that I'm um, well knowledgeable about this company and also highly interested in X, Y, and Z. Let's say it's a, a job for leadership development, highly interested in leadership development programs. Let's say it's a job for finance, highly interested in finance programs. Guess what ChatGPT will do? You attach the, the PDF. It's a public file. It's already out there in the world. It will digest that 100-page document for you, summarize it for you, and give you those five questions to ask back. It, even if you put the job description in beforehand, it will digest mm-hmm. that, knowing what job you're applying for and angling those questions based on that. Guys, there is yep. technology out there that literally helps you do what would take hours two uh, two years ago takes a mere 30 seconds mind blowing exactly exactly and, and if you if, if something that you don't want to do then 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 the, <laughs> then the recruiter is probably going to think well you're not that interested yeah yeah so. exactly cuz let's face it other people are so hey, exactly Kim- Kim, you have a consulting company and you have been so kind and generous to offer one free consultation to anybody that's listening to this episode and reaches out to you. Tell us what kind of consultations would they um, be able to receive from you? It depends. If they're coming to me as a, as a candidate, someone looking for an opportunity, obviously talk about similar things as we're discussing today. Um, you know, look into what, what they're currently doing, what we can do better. If they're an, an organization who's looking for my assistance, um, we would talk about what their needs are, you know, and I'm happy to help. Obviously, I do recruiting. I do process improvement. Um, you know, I look at contracts, you know, vendor contracts, various things that I do as a consultant outside of just recruiting and, and t- you know, talking to candidates r- with respect to their job searches. OK, so I do both. That is incredible. So again, go to the show notes, thesimplifiers.com. You'll find the links for how to get connected to Kim, uh, both on her website, as well as on LinkedIn, right there in the episode show notes. And make sure to reach out to her, let her know that you heard us on the Simplifiers podcast. And she's here as a wealth of resource and knowledge for you to to connect with. So thank you. Thanks, Mary. Of course, Kim, as we wrap up, um, there are a few questions I like to ask you that I ask everyone that comes on the podcast. Um, so here we go. The very first one is this. Um, tell me, what's one book or blog that you're reading these days that's either inspiring or poking holes and challenging your belief system? Yeah. Well, I found this book. It's called The Talent Fix by mm-hmm. Tim Sackett. And I really am a, a very aligned with his approach to talent acquisition. He discusses a lot about how talent acquisition should really not necessarily be under the HR function. Like it should be its own or it should be a true partner when it comes to working. And this is a, from a corporate standpoint, you know, agency is a little bit different. There's some, some dynamics relative to that. But I really have, have I've enjoyed his book very much so because I, I feel very aligned with what his thoughts are, the approaches are. Um, it's like one of those books where you just go, yes, exactly. That's what I was mm-hmm. thinking. <laughs> I love so, it. So yeah, so it's called The Talent Fix by Tim Sackett. Amazing. We will link that up in the show notes for you guys if you want to check it out. Again, the simplifiers.com. So tell me, who's one person, somebody that you know personally that you just feel is up to brilliant things? If we were to shine a spotlight on them right now. Tell me, uh, and you know, never know, maybe they'll be on the podcast one day. Who would that be? There is an individual that I worked with at a prior organization, and he came in and, and he came in as a recruiter, and he has since worked his way up to a director of talent acquisition. His name is Scott King, um, phenomenal individual. He has done great things for an organization called Rexel, and um, I think he would be he's he's implemented some some outstanding talent and talent development programs within that organization that have probably raise the bar of what they're considered as far as a place to work goes. So Scott right. King would be someone that I would love for you guys to talk with. 
Awesome. Well, we will link him up in the show notes. If you guys are curious about him and the work he does in the world, you can find that over again at thesimplifiers.com. So I believe gratitude and simplicity go hand in hand. Tell me, what are you grateful for today? Mm. Oh, I'm grateful to be here. Um, <laughs> breathing. No. Um, yes. yes. I mean, I'm grateful for, you know, all the experiences that I've had in, in, up to this point that have, have really helped me understand myself uh, working with individuals like I do so much better. So I'm very grateful for all those experiences, the thousands and thousands of candidates that I've spoken to, had the privilege of speaking to and learning from. Um, that's been an enormous, I think I have so much in here just from those people, right? I, I they, they do things I could never imagine doing, I, I would never be able to do. So I'm very grateful for all the knowledge I gained from from those conversations over Gosh, the years. And, and it really make, does give me um, empathy when I think about recruiters that are out there talking to thousands and thousands of people and trying to help make the right match for the right role. You guys, this is not easy work that, that recruiters have to do. I, I have a lot of empathy for you. Thank mm. you. It's enjoyable. You know, um, you have to like people for sure. Uh, and you have to understand that pe all people are different <laughs> and work through that. But it's, you know, it, yeah, you get to, you get to talk to a lot of wonderful people. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's and, really, it's really gratifying. Yeah. And connect the dots. Um, so my final question for you is this today. Um, and again, thank you so much for your time. Oh, Someone thanks. somewhere is listening to you and I right now. And let's just say they are so tired of searching and searching and searching for a job and feeling like the rejection automated emails with no feedback back um, are just a little bit soul crushing. They're feeling a little bit beyond hopeless. What's one thing you could whisper into their ear right now just to encourage them in this moment? Take a deep breath and keep going. Mm -hmm. There's a job there. There's a job there. Kim, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Mary. It's been great. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. 